When I moved here, there were no trees in my farm and it was very hot. I found people cutting down the big trees, selling charcoals. Wildlife Works has been operating here in Kenya since 1997, trying to find economic solutions for conservation. The community was clearing forest. You could hear the sound of, you know, funk, funk, funk sitting up here back then. So the real challenge was to try and convince them that not clearing bush could generate more benefits for them as a community than clearing bush. The whole issue of conservation revolves around land ownership. The land around here is uh, community owned or ancestral land. It was very difficult to explain to the local people what part a tree has in cleaning up the air from pollution which may be caused in a different part of the planet. None of our climate goals can be achieved if we can't stop deforestation. Removing forests is a double whammy because you have an immediate emission when the forest is lost and the carbon that has been stored in the forest for centuries is released into the atmosphere and then nothing to sequester the carbon that's being produced by, by our, our human activities. So how do you create a solution that's at enough scale for a whole community? The red mechanism was formed in the United Nations and it was a UN concept to bring value to the natural capital of forest, trying to stem the tide of deforestation. We started our first red project in 2009 with the idea we could use the carbon market to finance large-scale conservation activities. The Castigao Corridor is the place we decided to select for our first red project because the forest was really under intense threat. Everything that's a big challenge to a community is in this community. So we thought if we can solve the problem here, if we can generate enough value here for 70,000 people, it would be a great model that we could take anywhere at that point. The concept of conservation, as far as a red project is concerned, is you conserve the tree and you are paid for that. And that's the best concept I think it has, it has ever come in this part of the world. So the only thing is to let it stand, keep on standing, and plant more trees, which will bring more money for your prosperity. That concept has really inspired the people. They never thought that. At first, it was, it was thought that this is, this is madness. How can somebody pay for a tree which he has, doesn't, he hasn't seen it grow. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. This is sort of the very high carbon here. We've got these really nice, big, fully mature trees. If this tree here weighs five tons, then you're looking at about one and a quarter, one and a half tons of carbon in here. Now they have the ultimate use. They're earning an income. They're looking after their own survival. They're paying for the community to develop and they're able to stay here untouched. Lucky trees. The scale of benefits that Red can deliver to these rural forest communities is enormous, you know, unprecedented. These are communities that have owned this land for 42 years and have never received a dime from their ownership of the land in 42 years. So 42 years, no money from the land, one year, a million dollars. The Castigal Corridor Red Plus project is the first such project in the world. This is the first time that a community that live around a Red Plus project are earning money from the conservation of their biodiversity. This isn't given money, this is earned money. We share the proceeds with the community trust, and that community trust distributes money through five locational committees that are elected by the local people, and they make decisions on behalf of their location geographically within the project. Good afternoon. When we first got here 16 years ago, no child from this community had ever been to university. So they've decided they're going to use that money for education. The money goes to bursaries or uh, sponsorship for children to go to high school, which is not free in Kenya. The ones who have raised up their hands, they got bursaries from the carbon project. Every person is supposed to benefit from this carbon money. About uh, 1,800 children have benefited. I also benefit a bit because I have uh, two kids, one in secondary, she's in Form 4, and the other one is in college. The community is receiving this money and this money is doing the real work. That is the transparency which is there. 40% of the money will be going for education, 
and 60% will be going to the community projects. Wherever possible, we try and create jobs from in and around the project area. In total, we're employing nearly 400 people now. We started by building a small eco-factory. Everything we do in here is organic and fair trade. We proudly make between five and 7,000 of these every month. And this is for Puma's new sustainability line. This is one of the most significant co-benefits of the Casagal Corridor Red Project. The fact that we're able to invest the money made from the carbon project in building utilities like this, which then create jobs and create wealth. The Casagal Corridor Red Project forms a corridor between Savo East and Savo West National Parks. There's 14,000 elephants in the ecosystem which move between the two halves of the national park. Wildlife Works employs about 100 young men from the surrounding communities that we've trained to be wildlife rangers. The ranger's job is to look after wildlife and stop human-wildlife conflict. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, and you? Good, well done. All right. Most of what we do on the ground, seven days a week, 365 days a year, is try and protect the animals that are inside the Red Project. We stopped people from cutting trees. We stopped people from making charcoal. We stopped people from uh, killing wild animals. So that's why you can see all these uh, trees are growing now uh, beautifully. We're propagating in the tree nursery 50,000 indigenous trees a year. And we also have fruit trees, which are part of our agriculture intensification program. Looking ahead to try and find different forms of water source here, we have these rock domes all around the project area. The Saseni Rock Catchment is a community project that will be able to keep water for a couple of months during the rainy season. This is free water, essentially. It's seen as sort of manna from heaven. It, the rain falls on here, fills up the catchment below, which means that the community will always have access to free water. The money for the rock catchment is entirely from the earnings the community have made for looking after the trees and the carbon project. So this is a proper community project decided by the community and carried out by the community. Salama sana. Habari yako. The other main threat to the Cascagal Corridor project is charcoal burning. This tree was cut down by the charcoal burners, and this is exactly the thing Wildlife Works is trying to stop from these people cutting down the trees. If we're going to stop charcoal burning in the project area, we have to find an alternative. We've set up our own charcoal project. The way we're making charcoal is to trim the trees. So we trim off branches every year and put them into special kilns which form char. And we then press that into a lump again so it can be transported and then used by the consumer to cook their food. We can cook our food at one block. So it is very good, this charcoal. The tree will still standing. I don't like to see somebody cutting a tree. In fact, when I see somebody cutting a tree, I feel crying. One ton of carbon saved, one ton of carbon that is still standing in the forest today is worth something to the community this year, next year, and every year that the carbon project carries on. Now, the forest is protected by our people, and they are being paid through the carbon money. Even women are employed. We are changing the environment, and we are very, very happy. For the first time, there's a real solution to stopping deforestation, and a solution that is equitable and fair, and that provides the majority of benefit to the local people who protect the forest. This is one of the best examples of natural capital. Here there are 70,000 members of a community benefiting from natural capital directly. The next challenge is to try and find a way to replicate this model in as many ecosystems as we can. If a forward-thinking company wants to offset their carbon footprint in the West, buy the carbon credits from a, from a project like the Casagal Corridor Red Project, 
and that money goes in and is spent correctly by the landowners and the communities of a project. It can only be a win-win situation for everybody. A RAID project is one of the best concepts which can increase the forest cover right from the village to the national to the international community. The concept is quite very attractive. Nobody can leave, can, can leave it. Everybody is going to take it. And with that, is with a lot of incentive from, my, from the red funding, I think the world is going to be green.